And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. A Canadian and an Irish boat quietly left a Turkish port on Wednesday, bound for Gaza. Democracy Now! first broke the news on our live broadcast on Wednesday. This flotilla marks the latest attempt by international activists to break the Israeli naval blockade of Gaza. Earlier this year, Greece blocked the departure of several ships from another flotilla heading to the region. In 2010, Israeli forces killed nine Turkish activists, including a U.S. citizen, on an aid boat called the Mavi Marmara, which was part of the first such international flotilla. Well, this latest flotilla, with the two boats, is called Freedom Waves to Gaza. The Canadian boat is called Tahrir, Arabic for liberation. And the Irish boat is called Sirsha, Irish for freedom. Before they set sail, David Heap, one of the Canadian activists on board the Tahrir, explained the name of the flotilla. Coming out of the second Freedom Flotilla, we're calling what the current departure um, Freedom Waves to Gaza because um, rather than thinking of it as separate, countable waves that you can call one, two, and three, we're really thinking of it more as continuous waves of human solidarity, continuous waves of uh, people intent on challenging the blockade in different ways, coming from different countries, from different ports, different groups of uh, boats, whenever they're ready to go to challenge the blockade uh, in a way which is less predictable than an annual flotilla, um, but also more creative. We go right now to a video report. The boats are now sailing through international waters. Democracy Now! correspondent Jihan Hafiz is on board. It's an emotional moment for activists who spent weeks planning a secret mission to Gaza. After numerous setbacks and complications, an international delegation prepared to set off from a coastal town in southwestern Turkey in hopes of challenging Israel's siege of the Gaza Strip. The activists on board the Irish and Canadian boats dubbed Freedom Waves to Gaza organized under unusual circumstances compared to previous convoys to Gaza. Activists concealed all information about the flotilla from the public. A media embargo was in place for journalists invited to cover the event. Video journalists were not allowed to take out their cameras until the boat's departure. David Heap, a member of the steering committee on the Canadian boat, the Tahrir, explains. The cameras are just coming out now because we were keeping it very quiet and discreet uh, before our departure because we didn't want to attract attention to it. We didn't want to... Uh, put the Turkish authorities in a difficult position, so our departure was just as a private pleasure vessel. There was a discrepancy between what our ship's papers say in terms of the International Naval Survey Board and what we're allowed to carry. We're certified to carry up to 50 people. They have a regulation that a private pleasure vessel can only take uh, up to 12 people, including the captain. So very reluctantly, we reduced our delegation, our carefully chosen international delegation, and left 24 of our friends behind. Um, but they're all with us supporting the fact that we're, we're departing. Um, it's not about us, it's about the Palestinians of Gaza. Karen DeVito, a member of the Canadian delegation, attempted to reach Gaza from Greece this past summer before Greek authorities, under pressure from the Israeli and U.S. governments, intercepted the boats before they could reach international waters. It, it almost seemed like a replay of what happened this summer when we were unable to sail. That was a manifestation that the, the blockade has been outsourced. And that was very, very disappointing. But this time, we had to leave some people behind. That's heartbreaking to leave our colleagues behind. It's a bittersweet moment. But we really want to, to, to bring attention to the fact that ordinary people everywhere should be able to live in peace and in the presence of justice and without fear in their everyday lives and without fear overall that they're, that, that they're going to be invaded, occupied. These boxes were labeled as food, but they are actually filled with medical supplies. The Canadian vessel is taking $30,000 worth of medical supplies to Gaza, along with personal letters from Canadian citizens addressed to the residents of the besieged territory. Although the Turkish Coast Guard followed closely behind the Canadian and 
Irish vessels. Both boats made it out to international waters safely and began the long journey to Gaza. The main obstacle now that could prevent both boats from reaching their final destination is the Israeli response. In May of last year, Israeli commandos killed nine activists when the first flotilla tried to sail to Gaza. Activists say they have trained in non-violent resistance in the event the Israelis board the vessels. Kit Kittredge is the only American delegate. She says those on board are trained in non-violent resistance and are prepared for the possibility the Israelis intercept the boat. We just reached international waters, so I'm ecstatic. And I also anticipate that the Israeli army probably, the Navy, is probably considering boarding us at some point on our way to Gaza and the siege. And um, I'm not feeling fearful. I'm feeling actually pretty peaceful, and that's what we are. We are a peaceful boat and a peaceful uh, flotilla going to end the siege. As news of the flotilla continued to circulate throughout the night, Israeli forces announced their navy is prepared to block the boats from reaching Gaza's shores. To prevent a possible assault by Israeli forces in the evening, organizers are planning for both boats to reach Gaza's territorial borders during daylight hours. In the meantime, both vessels sail freely into open waters. Jahan Hafiz for Democracy Now! on the Tahrir and Ralph to Gaza. And we are joined right now by Jihan Hafiz, who is on board the Tahrir. That's the Canadian boat, part of the two-boat flotilla headed to Gaza right now in international waters. Uh, we'll see if uh, we can hear her clearly. Jihan, are you there? Jihan, are you there? Jihan, can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing you. Ah, very good. If yes, you, I'm here. If you could yes, just tell us the— Yes, we can, hear you. Can you, hear me? Yes, yes, we can, can hear, hear you fine. Can you tell us the latest report from where you are in international waters? You're on the Tahrir, the Canadian boat. Um, the other boat that is uh, alongside of you, uh, the Irish boat, have you made contact yet? And what are your plans, the group's plans, on the two boats at this point? Yes, for the first time today, actually since this trip was planned, uh, the delegations from the Canadian boat were able to make physical contact with the Irish boats. As we've been sailing, it's been uh, the, the seas, the waters have been very rough here, so they haven't been able to board the boat, and we haven't been able to board their vessel. However, the plan is to continue the voyage, to continue this uh, voyage to Gaza, regardless of the threats coming from the Israeli government. And in fact, both teams met today to hold meetings with the journalists and delegates on board to discuss a strategy uh, for when the Israelis do intercept the boat, if they intercept the boat, and what will take place from there. We're about 120, excuse me, 150 to 170 kilometers off the coast of Gaza. It'll take us about another day and a half to get there. As I mentioned in the report, uh, the activists and the organizers of both flotillas do not want to reach Gaza's borders, at least the, the territorial region until uh, daylight. They do not want to have a similar situation to what happened to the Marvi Marmara. Uh, that, that boat was attacked in the evening, and they want to avoid any kind of uh, misperception about violence if violence is committed. Um, as mentioned in the report as well, there's also a commitment to nonviolent resistance. There was training for that today on the boats uh, to make sure that if we do come in contact with the Israelis, uh, there will be no confrontation from those on either boats. Um, aside from that, uh, the spirits have been very high. Jahan, is there a boat that is following you? At the moment, there is not. There was, uh, last night, up until 4 o'clock in the morning, uh, on our side, there was an unidentified boat that was following us. Uh, the only other boat that followed us out of international waters was the Turkish Coast Guard. So from the boat, we all presumed it was the Turkish Coast Guard, uh, but there's no longer anyone following us. It's only, uh, it's only the Irish boat and the Canadian open waters. Jihan, we, uh, you took us on a tour of the boat you are on, the Tahrir, and we met some of the activists on board, Canadian, Australian, there's a U.S. citizen on board as well. Who's on the Irish boat? 
These are solely Irish delegates. Some of them are former members of parliaments. We haven't been able to sit down and speak with them, uh, but we do know that there are three to five on board who are former members of parliaments. Um, also, they, uh, they're, they're a group that, could, that has been making, that has continuously made efforts a different, through different initiatives to reach Gaza, and um, we haven't been able to speak with them, um, but they have been to Gaza a number of times before, some of the delegates, and they plan this on their own and, and close coordination with the steering committee here. However, uh, we have not been in touch with them at all. They've sort of been on their own in this uh, in this journey, uh, and mainly because of the waters, but also because of the secrecy of the planning of this. Uh, so they're mainly, it's mainly an Irish delegation. I also want to mention that the uh, Canadian boat was restricted to 12 people out of the 36 who were meant to come along on the Tahrir, the, uh, the Canadian boat, only 12 were allowed on. Whereas Whereas the Irish boats, they only allowed them to have 12 on, but they snuck some people on their boats. And so the entire Irish delegation that came to Turkey uh, to take this, to make this voyage to, to Gaza is present, and they're heading in that direction now. Uh, we have uh, so supporters from this boat are still in Turkey. Some returned home, and they're working on, um, they're working on logistical work as well as media work to communicate with people on the boat. The internet hasn't been uh, hasn't been precise at times. It goes out every now and then. Uh, but there is a lot of international support from the organizations represented on this boat, as well as the Irish one, including a number of uh, committees around the world that are supporting what these freedom these freedom waves to Gaza are, essentially an extension of the, of the Free Gaza movement, which is a, a movement to break the siege by any means and at any cost. Is there fear on board uh, your boat, the Tahrir, the Canadian boat that you are covering? There are 12 people on board the boat, is that right? The captain, six activists, and five journalists. Yes, there is uh, there is concern. I wouldn't say fear. I think people here are defiant and that they they believe in what they're doing and and they believe that what they're doing is peaceful and that they will uh, even if, if if there is any kind of uh, uh, the board the Israelis do board the boat or intercept the boat there will not be any resistance any violent confrontation from any of the activists here. So the concern is mainly um, uh, losing uh, losing a lot of their equipment. Some people came here with their their cell phones, their laptops. I, I have camera equipment here. So there's a lot of concern about if we do get detained on international waters, what will become of our, uh, our personal items, but as well, what will happen when we're in detention, how long will we stay there? And there are some Arabs on this boat, and they expressed a deep concern that they could be detained by Arabs, and they have possibly their legal rights will not be um, uh, uh, will not be respected the way the international delegates will be. And so there are legal teams now working on the ground in the United States and in Canada, Canada to ensure that uh, those who have either visa, visa issues or who are concerned about being detained by the Israelis will have full legal rights in the event that something uh, that the Israelis do board the boat. Jihan Hafiz, I want to thank you for being with us, reporting for Democracy Now! on board the Tahrir. Uh, that's the Canadian boat, one of two boats in what they're calling the Freedom Waves to Gaza flotilla that set sail yesterday from Turkey, bound for Gaza. She's speaking to us from the high seas. We will follow this journey through the day through tweets and reports at our website, democracynow.org. This is Democracy Now! We'll be back in a minute.